get a little carried away with the smoke or maybe some grease and now you've got a bit of an off-putting smell inside your Kamado Joe or maybe you're going to put it away for storage and you don't want anything that's going to grow you know some bacteria or mildew cultures or anything like that over the winter or maybe you want to try cooking inside of your dome and do some non bread or something like that right on the hot ceramics these are all good reasons to do a deep clean of your dome and so i'm going to show you how to turn your ceramics from that black gook into something that looks like brand new ceramic hey i'm james from smoking dad barbecue and ever since i did my deep clean video in spring where i showed you how to use a clean fire in order to deep clean the inside of your kamado joe or big green egg that can include the lower ceramics the heat deflector plates we can make those look white as snow and good as new but when you're using your deflector plates your dome doesn't turn out white like the big joe that i've just done this recently on it looks more like my kamado joe classic where the inside and the base is clean but your dome remains black and so whether you want to cook on this you're going to be storing your joe for winter and you don't want any cultures or anything like that growing there's a ton of reasons that you may want to do this and i'm going to show you exactly how i do my deep clean today but this is not without its risk and so i want to stress that at the beginning of the video before you invest any more time uh, in this video i'm more than happy to have you hang out for a bit but this is not without its risk so first, anytime that we're going, you know, at or above the maximum recommended temperature guidelines, this can cause a, a few potential problems. One thing that may happen is we'll put some extra stress on your gasket. So I've done this and again, mine's fine, but that's possible. Uh, it may burn out your temperature probe. And so we're going to remove our temperature probes. So we're not going to actually know what temperature we're running at, but I don't want to wind that well past 700 degrees Fahrenheit and potentially damage my temperature gauge and need to order a new one and it can cause some of the paint on the control tower top to flake off and so my top works right as new good as new on the big joe but i lost a piece of paint on the inside and so these are a couple things that could happen uh, maybe the last thing that could happen is it could shift your alignment you can get a bit of an overbite or an underbite on your dome now that's easy to fix and i have that in an upcoming video or at least i'm planning to do that in an upcoming video let me know if you'd like to see that since i get a lot of questions on dome alignment or smoke leaks that's an easy fix and i'm more than happy to share that with you if enough people are looking for that type of video so let me know down below but for today, now that you've been warned of some of the potential risks, uh, and again, I've not had any of these problems, but I did want to not lead you into something that could potentially cause any of these problems to occur and you not know full well what you're getting into, let's get ready to deep clean our Kamado Joe Classic. I'll bring you nice and close and show you how we're gonna set up for our dome deep clean. So for doing a deep clean, we wanna remove for this high temperature, anything that we don't want to uh, potentially be exposed to those high heat that doesn't need to. So I've already taken out my divide and conquer rack, my deflector plates we're not doing today. Since if I did them, I'm not gonna get the heat up in the dome that I need to clean that. Instead, we'll clean the deflector plates, uh, as well as I mentioned the temperature gauge. So even our cooking grids, I'm not going to have them in here since high, high temperature can cause stainless steel to start to get to a spot where it may develop some rust uh, and you have to oil your grates and clean them up in order to you know stop that from happening. So I don't want to uh, stress any of my stainless steel components, don't wanna damage my temperature gauge. So those are all the things that we're gonna get out to remove the temperature gauge. We just need a socket set or a wrench so we can loosen that bolt. We're gonna take that right out, clean everything else out and start with a nice full basket of charcoal. I'm always mentioning don't overfill your basket. I have ran my Big Joe for 56 hours on a full basket. There is way more capacity for fuel than what you ever need to use in an individual cook. But today we're going for inferno mode for a long time and we are going to be burning some fuel uh, until there's nothing left. And so let me bring you nice and close, show you uh, all those steps up in detail and we're ready to start our fire and get our deep clean on our Kamado Joe Classic on the road. Okay, so we've got our basket full of charcoal. As you can see, I'm right to the top line. The bottom draft door is open and we'll open our control tower top 
all the way. I've got my bottle on my sous vide gun. Uh, it's the smaller version of the grill torch. If you haven't seen this, it puts out about 240,000 BTU versus 400,000. I normally use this for searing or starting a smaller fire in the Joe Jr. But since that's what I've got the bottle on today, we're going to use this to start our fire. Let's fire it up. So we've got a nice fire started in the middle. We're just going to let that spread and do its work. So bottom vent all the way open, top vent all the way open, at least for this first hour. Now this actually won't work, or at least I've not had success if we just let this fly the entire time with the dome open since all that heat is escaping. And so what we wanna do is get it really nice and hot, burn some of that off. And then uh, after about one to two hours, we're going to close the top dome, but leave that in its maximum air position. I'll rejoin you with a couple other uh, of the final steps in a little bit, but for right now, we're just gonna let this build some heat. I'll see you in about an hour, hour and a half when we get ready to do our first step in turning our dome from black to white. All right, it has now been 90 minutes and our Komodo Joe is hot. I don't know what the temperature is inside since we removed the probe to protect it, but using my Thermapen IR, I'm able to get a sensory reading of the dome temperature and it is sitting around 530 degrees on the outside. So it is good and warm. But as you can tell here, if I pop open the dome, even though we're getting some good cleaning, I'm no longer smelling any of those oils or grease or just anything that we didn't want inside of our Joe. It now just smells like nothing. If I pop open the dome, you can see it doesn't look white, it's still black. And so this is now where we want to start to trap some of that heat, which is sort of the magic last step to go from black to a white dome. And all we need to do for this step is adjust our top vent from being all the way open to the maximum open closed position. And that's just going to trap some of that heat, start to cause our fire to die down. And I'm just gonna let the rest of the charcoal basket for the next hour or so consume that. I've just adjusted that and there's uh, new oils and kind of burning smell that we were getting at the beginning of the process, which is from some of that grease that is stuck in the top of our cap. So all we're gonna do now is add another hour. So we've done 90 minutes for the first step, another hour for this step and we'll check in. And I think we will be close to done. And if not close to done, our charcoal basket. If it's nearly out, you can just go ahead and let it burn out and cool off. And we'll pick this back up either later tonight or tomorrow when it's completely cool to the touch. And we'll be able to wipe and remove some of that ash uh, and dust that'll be stuck to our dome. So we are good as new and ready to go forward from there. I'll rejoin you when there's another update or step that you need to do in order to pull off the perfect deep clean inside of your Komodo Joe dome. All right, it's the next day and our Komodo Joe Classic has completely cooled off overnight so I can bring you nice and close and show you the inside. But before I do that, what I will mention is if after you finish your kind of high heat inferno mode with the dome open and then another um, stint with the dome closed and you take a peek and you still see black, it's not going to turn white magically overnight. And this happened to be the case with my classic since I've never done this on the dome on my classic and it's got three, four years, uh, or I think three years of seasoning or so built up on that. It needed a little bit more. So what I did for that is just tossed in another two or three pieces of charcoal, let the dome go open again for 45 minutes and then returned back to the dome closed position for 45 minutes. And when I took a peek the second time, we now had our white dome and we got everything that we wanted to uh, be able to do a deep clean on our dome. So take a peek and if it's not white, add a little bit more charcoal, repeat the same process in less time and you'll get the result that you're after. So let me bring you nice and close, show you what it looks like inside. We also got a little bit of cleaning to do to get some of that dust and um, kind of burnt up um, you know, junk out of the inside of our grill. We'll reinstall the, uh, the temperature gauge and we'll be ready to start cooking good as new on our Komodo Joe Classic. Okay, so let's take a look inside. And just like that, you can see 
top dome, bottom dome, everything is nice and clean, but we have a fair bit of this dust that we want to get off. So I'm just gonna get a paper towel and a vacuum. I'll take you fast forward while we just wipe this down, shake out our basket, and we will be ready to install our temperature gauge again. So after a quick clean, our Komodo Joe Classic Joe is now ready to go for the next cook and or uh, one of those other options if you were looking to put this away for storage and you didn't want any bacteria cultures or anything like growing uh, like that growing inside of your grill there is no survivors here so this is now completely safe to put away in the garage or something like that if you happen to be one of those folks who store their grill over the winter season and or if you want to cook on your ceramics and do something like a non-bread etc this is now ready to go nice clean ceramic you're not going to get any of that off-putting you know built up seasoning imparting its way into a sensitive food like bread or anything like that you might have in store. I also want to remind you for the month of November, if you're a subscriber, you can still join plenty of space. Don't worry, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment in any video for the month of November, and I'll be giving away a brand new Kamado Joe Kettle Joe, along with the upgraded side shelves made by Smokeware. If you don't luck out and happen to win that, uh, they've offered me a safe 10% code. All the details for that are down in the description below. But that's it for today. I really want to thank you for hanging out. If you like this video, please let YouTube know by smashing that thumbs up button and let me know by hitting subscribe to catch future videos. I'm James from Smoking Dead Barbecue signing off. And remember, don't be afraid to fire it up.